If you cube a Fibonacci number, it turns out that it's actually a sum of Fibonacci numbers with some coefficients. How do we figure out what those coefficients are? This turns out to be a problem that's actually in the Fibonacci Quarterly, a journal that has a bunch of different Fibonacci results and problems. If we click on one of these examples, we'll see that in our journal we have elementary problems and solutions, and we also have advanced problems and solutions as well. And if you click, you'll see there's tons of Fibonacci problems if you're interested in working on these really cool, interesting, different problems. And some of them are really quite advanced. Some of them you can sink your teeth into if you know a little bit about the Fibonacci sequence. And this journal has tons and tons of problems like this. If you go back, there are so many issues, not just going back to the 2010s, but going way back all the way to the 1960s. So let's go ahead and address our current problem. How do we approach this? Well, the key is using an explicit formula for the Fibonacci numbers in terms of powers of the number alpha, which is one plus root five over two, and beta, which is one minus root five over two. Okay, and it turns out the nth Fibonacci number is alpha to the n minus beta to the n all over root five. Okay, some things that are gonna be useful in order to um, use this formula is that alpha times beta is negative one. And alpha plus beta will turn out to be one. And you can compute those explicitly using what alpha and beta are. So let's go ahead and actually check that this formula works as an explicit formula for the Fibonacci numbers. For small values, you can check yourself, but let's check f sub n plus one plus f sub n. It'll be alpha to the n minus beta to the n over root five. And let me add alpha to the n minus beta to the n all over root five. And the hope is that this is f sub n plus two. That's the recursion that the Fibonacci numbers satisfy. Okay, if we group things together, we'll get alpha to the n times alpha plus one, when we group the alpha powers together, and then we subtract beta to the n times the quantity beta plus one, all over the square root of five. Now here's an interesting part. If we look at alpha plus one, we can actually represent it differently in terms of alpha. Using the two equations that we have, that alpha beta is negative one and alpha plus beta is one, we get alpha times the quantity one minus alpha is negative one. So if we expand this, we get negative alpha squared is equal to negative one minus alpha. Or in other words, alpha is one plus alpha. So we can replace that alpha plus one with the alpha squared. So we get alpha to the n times alpha squared minus beta to the n times beta squared all over the square root of five. And bringing the exponents together, that's alpha to the n plus one minus beta to the n, sorry, alpha to the n plus two minus beta to the n plus two all over root five. Perfect. That is f sub n plus two with our formula. So this indeed is an explicit formula for the Fibonacci numbers. So let's see how we can use it to generate these really cool recurrence relations for powers of the Fibonacci numbers themselves. We'll particularly focus on odd powers. Let's look at the cube of Fn explicitly. That was the first recursion we were trying to get originally in the video. So as we had, f sub n is alpha to the n minus beta to the n all over root five, and we're cubing this. So let's actually expand this as a cube. The bottom will have root five cubed, which is five root five. Then the top will expand explicitly. We get the first term alpha to the n raised to the three power minus three alpha n all squared beta to the n plus three alpha to the n beta to the n squared. And then finally minus the quantity beta to the n raised to the third power. Now what we want to do is group things together based on the exponents so we can write them as Fibonacci numbers. So if we group the red underlines together and the purple underline together, we get alpha to the 3n minus beta to the 3n all over root 5 and we'll bring the 1 fifth out. And then we have this other term, which we can subtract a common factor of three. We have a five in the denominator, and then both the terms that are left have a common factor of alpha to the n, beta to the n. Okay, then we'll have a root five in the denominator, and then the factor that's left is alpha to the n minus beta to the n. So now we're seeing copies of 
Fibonacci numbers with different indices. Here we have f sub 3n, and here we have f sub n itself. And alpha times beta was negative 1, so we put it all together, we get 1 fifth of f sub 3n minus 3 fifths, the quantity negative 1 raised to the n, times f sub n. So there we have it, a cube of a Fibonacci number is a linear combination of the 3 nth and the nth Fibonacci number. So let's see how we can actually use this particular case as motivation for how to deal with the odd powers of Fibonacci numbers in general. And then I'm going to ask you to try the, odd, the, the even powers of Fibonacci numbers in the comments below. So let's do the same type of thing we did with the third power with the arbitrary odd power 2 to the k plus 1. We'll write fn explicitly as a formula like we did, but we'll be careful when we do the expansion because there's going to be a lot of terms. So we'll have alpha to the n minus beta to the n over root 5, and we're raising that to the 2k plus 1th power. Now, to expand to the 2k plus 1th power, we'll need help from the binomial theorem, which allows us to expand a sum or a difference like alpha to the n, beta to the n. Now, in the denominator, we'll take out the 1 over root 5 raised to the 2k plus 1. Then, by the binomial theorem, we'll have the sum j equals 0 to 2k plus 1. A binomial coefficient, 2k plus 1, choose j. And then times our first term raised to the 2k plus 1 minus that j, and our second term raised to the j. But our second term has this negative, so we also need to multiply by a negative 1 to the j. Okay, so again, using the motivation we had with the cube term, what we did with the cube term is we paired different powers together. So we'll leave the factor of the constant that's outside the sum alone, and take the sum itself and break it up to the sum j equals 0 to k, so only halfway up, take the term that we have in our summation, which is 2k plus 1 choose j times alpha to the n raised to the 2k plus 1 minus j times beta to the n raised to the j times negative 1 to the j. And then we'll add the opposite term in the sum. So that's the 2k plus 1 minus j term. So we get 2k plus 1, choose 2k plus 1 minus j, alpha to the n raised to the j, beta to the n raised to the 2k plus 1 minus j, and then times negative 1 to the 2k plus 1 minus j itself. And then we need to see how this stuff simplifies. Now, the second binomial coefficient is the same as 2k plus 1 choose j by the symmetry of binomial coefficients about the middle. This term that we just underlined here is alpha to the n, beta to the n, raised to the j, and then we have an extra piece for the alpha to the n. It's alpha to the n raised to the 2k plus 1 minus 2j. And that's actually positive because j goes from 0 to k. We'll have a similar type of factorization out with the underlying term here, where the beta and alpha roles are interchanged. And then, if we look at the underlying purple terms, their exponents add to an odd number, 2k plus 1, so they cancel each other out. The one will be negative, one will be positive. So we get 2k plus 1 choose j, that common factor. And then we have some other common factors that we can pull out. We'll get a negative 1 to the j. And then we'll have a minus 2k, 1 to the 2k plus 1 in the second term. So we get an alpha to the n raised to the 2k plus 1 minus 2j, and subtract, because of that contribution, beta to the n raised to the 2k plus 1 minus j, 2j. Great. So we're set to deal with the entire expression. We have to remember this factor that we had outside of the sum. We'll take one copy of the root 5 and put it under the difference of these powers of alpha to the n and beta to the n, since we know that's helpful for our formula. Okay, and then we'll use that together with the 
leftover piece, which is 1 over root 5 to the 2k, and take that outside. So we'll have 1 over 5 to the k because root 5 squared is 5. Okay, and so now we're pretty set with our coefficients. We'll have a sum with the 1 to the 1 over 5 to the k pulled out, the sum j equals 0 to k, and then 2k plus 1, choose j, negative 1 to the j, and then we have an actual Fibonacci number that's left. Now here the way we've written them has a little bit, is a little bit off in the index. We say f sub 2k plus 1 minus 2j, and that should actually be f sub n times the quantity 2k plus 1 minus 2j. So we actually get that the odd powers of Fibonacci numbers can be represented as linear combinations of Fibonacci numbers themselves. A really cool result that's really helpful because of Binet's formula, the explicit formula for Fibonacci numbers. So in the comments, I'd like you to try this with even powers. What kind of summation do you get in that case? How can you re represent the, an even power of a Fibonacci number in terms of Fibonacci numbers? Love to hear your thoughts. And we'll see you in the next video.